Hey guys, this is John Hang, and in today's video, I'll be going over how I used Rust-Oleum's DIY epoxy shield to refinish my garage floor. I'll be going over how I got it to the state um, by first going over how I refinished the floor and then how I applied the epoxy. So stick around for that. At the end of the video, I'll also go over a quick garage update now that I actually have a practically full gym in here. So stick around. All right, to start off, let me introduce the garage in its previous state. This is what it looked like when I moved into the house, pretty much tons of gunk everywhere. You can even see that the previous owner spray painted a handicap sign, which doesn't make any sense. Other than that, there's just a bunch of paint and other scum around. It doesn't look like this place was very well maintained. Um, and from what I can understand is that the previous owners mostly just used this for storage as well as like home projects. like. They would be painting this and that and wouldn't really care about what's going on or keeping it clean. This is a previous picture of it. And so what I wanted to first attempt was to borrow my girlfriend's dad's pressure washer. It's a 2400 PSI pressure washer, which should be good enough to strip paint. But um, quickly I found out that I wasn't really doing that. The gunk was just way too built up. And also this pressure washer would have taken me like 100 million gallons of water in practically all day to clean this area up. So I quickly gave up on it and called it a day there. I guess while I had the area wet, I decided to just uh, clean it down with some soap and a bristle brush. The very next day, I went to Home Depot's rental center and picked up this floor refinisher. At the same time, I also rented this diamond-tipped refinishing blade disc thing that's purpose-built for removing paint from garage floors. I would definitely say don't be like me and definitely watch some sort of tutorial YouTube video on how to use this thing before you actually attempt to use it. I would also definitely recommend wearing closed-toed shoes because I think that if I were not wearing my boots here, I definitely would have lost a toe or something because this thing kind of went out of control and spun everywhere and the diamond tip blade actually went onto my boot, which is very scary. Here I'm just trying to find the balance of it and how to operate it because technically it is just a spinning blade and depending on how much weight you give one side of it uh, can determine what side that it wants to lean towards. And that's kind of how I figured out how to control it. If I wanted to move it towards the right, I would give it a little bit more pressure towards the front. And if I gave it a little bit more pressure to the back, it would actually start moving to the left slightly. So once I figured that out, it was pretty easy to actually use. And for the most part, it was like almost no touch. You could just use your hips almost to control where it was going. And so at this point, I got very comfortable in using it. You can see that it kicks up a ton of dust. So make sure that you're wearing a mask and maybe, I don't know, maybe make sure that the area is ventilated. Here it is at 30 times speed, maybe 60 times speed, and this is when I start just looking like a Sims character that you play at like 12 times speed. Uh, compared to the pressure washer, this thing was doing amazing and it was actually doing its job. In this clip I actually got comfortable enough to operate it with one hand while using my camera and the other, and you can see me going over this gigantic bump of paint. You can actually see the paint chips flying away, which is really satisfying to do. Again, you can see just how much dust is being kicked off because I'm literally just scraping off the entire, I don't know, first millimeter or two of the entire garage. By the end of it, it literally looked like I was at the beach. You can see the ripples of dust uh, just from how I was uh, refinishing the floor. After about two hours, the garage was done and I just used a shop vac to vacuum up all the dust. I will say that it's a lot easier to just use your shop broom and push everything into the corner and then use your shop vac. So here's what the garage looked like after I used that finishing tool. You can see it looks pretty much brand new except that it's super dusty. And here is a side-by-side -side comparison of the garage before and after. I tried my best to line them up but you can see the difference there. It's pretty big. So the shop broom and the shop vac couldn't get exactly everything because the dust that was left behind was so fine, so I did end up having to wash it again, um, and the first step of that was pretty much wetting everything down. One cool thing about all this really fine dust was that it was collecting on the water and it was actually kind of making the surface a little bit hydrophobic until I added more water. So yeah, when it was completely soaked I used this concrete cleaner. I don't think that this step was 100% necessary, but 
Um, maybe if your garage was as dirty as mine, it would be helpful. And I figured that, you know, if I'm refinishing this, I might as well do it the right way and make sure that the epoxy that I apply at the end stays there for a long time. One thing that I would definitely recommend for this project, since you'll be dealing with water a lot, is definitely to purchase this sort of squeegee thing. I think I bought this for about $20, and it's been useful so far. One really cool thing about using the squeegee is now that the surface of the garage has been pretty much scratched up and uh, the surface is brand new, it's really easy to just push this all away. Before, in the first step, um, the water was getting caught everywhere, but now it's super smooth and you could probably even slip on this. I think that this was another day and I took the time to actually take all the garage items and actually use my leaf blower to blow all the dust off. Um, it's kind of satisfying seeing all of it fly off. And I think that this was a few days after and most of the garage was pretty dry except for maybe the edges, but you can see here that it's almost blinding the difference there is like before it was like dark and a little tannish and there it's like reflecting the ceiling like and so here's the product that i'm using today it'll be rust-oleum's epoxy shield i got this for about 70 dollars from lowe's you'd probably get it cheaper from other places like amazon but this is available to me the first step of it is to use this concrete etcher you just fill a five gallon bucket with i think it's two gallons you'll just need to read the instructions and you just pour it and mix it together. What you'll also need for this is a, well, here I used a metal rod because this is after all acid, so I didn't really want to mix it with something that I cared about. Again, I re-wetted the garage floor and poured the acid etcher into, um, I forget what this thing's called. It's a sprayer of some sorts. I usually use it for bugs, but uh, in this case, it would be good for the acid etcher. And so with the acid etcher, you want to make sure that you're spraying it on a wet surface. So that's why I've kind of got it only in this one edge at the beginning. And so you spray it while it's still wet, you scrub it down and you kind of let it sit there and then you kind of wash it away. So I was doing this in multiple steps. And so after you're done with the acid etch, you just wash it off and you push it out of the garage and just let it dry. During this time, I also decided to recalk the garage because that would have made the epoxy when I apply it look that much nicer. All right, so what comes in the kit is a two-part epoxy as well as a bag of speckles. You also need regular painting equipment on the side to do this. So to activate the epoxy, you pour part one into part two, and what this does is it activates the chemicals in there and you pretty much have a 20 to 30 minute wait time that 20 to 30 minute wait time will really depend on the temperature that you're doing this at, so just follow the instructions in the packaging. Once the epoxy is ready to be used, you just kind of treat it like regular paint. You cut around the edges and you can just use a roller to paint the other parts of the garage. Another thing to remember is that you want to be painting this in about 5 by 5 foot squares. To make this a little bit easier on yourself, you should probably use some sort of uh, extendable paint pole like I am here. I think this one's about seven feet long. Another thing you want to make sure of is to work quickly and maintain a wet edge. If you don't do that, the paint will dry before you start the next batch and you won't get even like shine. It looks really weird and we ended up doing that or we ended up messing up that way. So in the back of the garage is a lot shinier than the front of the garage. That definitely wasn't a deal breaker though. This is also probably a two-person job. One person should be rolling while the other one is throwing the flakes, as well as fixing minor things here and there, as well as doing the cutting. That's a lot of work for one person to be doing at the same time, especially with a, let's say, 90-minute pot time. All right, so sadly, I don't have too much video of me actually rolling the epoxy on. And the major reason for that is because um, I kind of messed up on the pot time as we would call it. Uh, I was going into this thinking that this epoxy works a lot like paint, and so with paint you kind of have like all the time in the world to work with, but with epoxy it's actually some sort of chemical agent that's causing it to uh, do this. And so uh, you do have a limited amount of time doing this, and because of that, um, towards the end of this, uh, my epoxy started gumming up and I was sort of in a rush. Hey, 
So I was sort of in a rush to finish with the epoxy, and because of that, towards the end, uh, it was really difficult to roll. Like imagine, um, towards the beginning, um, the paint was, the epoxy was working a lot like paint, and towards the end, it was working a lot like goop or like boogers almost. It was that thick, and to get that to roll was very difficult. And because of that, um, I kind of stopped recording. Um, all right, so I also almost forgot to mention that with the kit comes these uh, speckled flakes that you can just toss up into the air and they'll stick onto the epoxy. Uh, one thing that I would note is probably don't hold too much into your hand at once. Um, here you can see I dropped a bunch, which is why they're all like kind of right here, but everywhere else is sort of like just a lot more spread out. Be careful about holding too much in your hand because I actually threw it up and then while I was throwing it up, I was like, wait, I don't want to do this. And then I also stopped them, but kind of let go of my hand. So they kind of just fell straight to the ground. That's why it looks like that there. But I don't think that it looks too bad, um, but definitely something to keep in mind. All right. And so finally here is what the garage looked like the day after painting it. It's a huge difference from what it looked like in the beginning. And honestly, painting was the shortest step, and the entire restoration was probably 95% of the time that I took to finish this. Here are some B-roll shots that I got, and it's definitely not perfect, and it could have been done a little bit better, but as an amateur like I am, and for $70, this is, I think, a lot of good value. You can see it shining right there. One thing that I would have done differently is patched up these random holes that my garage had. But I would say that these details are almost negligible because this is a detached garage and you will have imperfections like that. And so finally now on to the garage tour. All right, since my last update video on the garage, I've accumulated a lot more things. I've needed more storage or organization as at least. And so this is what things currently look like. Um, I am kind of on the lookout for more storage options because you can see here, I've got a ton of gloves and I don't really have anywhere to put them. Um, I also built this additional uh, charging box. Uh, you can see here I have my Ryobi tools, some of them at least hanging upside down, as well as my chargers and some additional storage. I have some sandpaper underneath this battery and that freed up a lot of storage for other things that I had to get. Um, also put my battery charger for my lawnmower there. And so here's just like the rest of the lawn, what do you call this? Wall control metal pegboards. You can see I've got some more measuring equipment, a lot more lawn equipment. I've got multiple shovels now, some rakes, barring a step ladder and so on. Started doing some potting. All right, so on the back side, I've got a double bike rack as well as a mini fridge. Um, both those are pretty handy in the garage. You know, I'll keep in like some sports drinks, some uh, nice carbs to have while working out in here. Me and my girlfriend, since we've been in quarantine, we like to go biking and you know, it's just been a decent way to get out of the garage or get out of the house. I mean, we're not living in the garage. Um, here, I just kind of hook in my helmets to where uh, the mount sits. Here, I've got my lawnmower, which I really love actually. Um, it's an electric lawnmower from Ego, and it's just been very convenient to have an electric mower and not have to uh, go to the store to get gas. And so over in this corner is probably what I've been most excited for about this garage is my own gym setup. Originally, I was hoping to have like a wall mounted squat rack, but I actually ended up getting this squat rack for free from a coworker. And so I definitely couldn't pass that up. It was either get this for free and have to move them once in a while or pay $650 for a wall mounted squat rack, which I definitely didn't want to do. Um, and since it's been quarantine, um, it's been difficult to get weights, but I'm actually borrowing the weights from my office right now. Uh, on the side, I've got some change plates, which uh, weren't as hard to find, um, but still waiting on my own set of weights. On the side, you know, every garage gym has to have an American flag. I put some motivational posters there. Um, and if you've been following along, they are building a 
neighborhood behind my house, they're really building that thing down. All right. And then over here off to the side, we've just got additional rubber mats and I just installed that uh, pull-up bar. Let me walk up to it a little bit. I just installed this pull-up bar over the weekend and did Murph with it. And yeah, I'm actually looking to build a shed behind the garage because all these lawn tools are actually taking up more space than I anticipated. Uh, you can see here, like, uh, this step ladder should definitely be organized somewhere and it shouldn't just be leaning against the wall. Like that's, that's a red flag to me. And so maybe that shed's coming sometime, I don't know, in the summer, but hopefully you enjoyed this garage update. Um, I've actually been able to work out here. Uh, it's been pretty nice, uh, considering like all gyms in Virginia are closed right now. But yeah. All right, hopefully you guys got some good information out of this video or enjoyed the garage update at least. Um, remember, if you like this video and you're enjoying the content, consider subscribing or liking or commenting or whatever else. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace.